Hi everyone and welcome to The OC Show, episode 6 of season 2. I'm Truthman from Overclocking TV and this is Tim from uh, OC TV slash as and, you guys feel it. And we are here right in live from the Gamers Assembly in France for the HWBot World Tour. We're going to talk about that a little bit better in the show. And for with us today we have two special guests, one of which uh, is one of uh, Roman Hartung, Der Bauer. Uh, yeah. From Germany. Hi, Roman. Hey, man. How's How it going? Are you? <laughs> yeah, well, awesome. How are you guys? <laughs> hey, you're just like sitting in front of us. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, it seems you're alive and in kind of good shape. So, I suppose everything is fine. <laughs> Thanks, you too. <laughs> and we also have um, Ivisman from uh, UK, right? Yeah. Hi, Ivisman. How, right. How's it going? How are you guys? You well? Very well, thank you. It's a bit uh, tiring weekend, but it's all fine. Well, you know, it's like things are going here and there and back and forth. And so what will happen during the weekend is uh, that we are here at the Azure Bot World Tour, but today and for the next hour, we're going to be talking about what's going on in the overclocking world. Yeah, actually, there's a lot of uh, stuff going on in Europe in the, this week and the coming weeks. Um, there's uh, basically three major events this April going on here in Europe. We have uh, so the HR World War II where we are right now. Um, there's the ROG camp in Germany uh, organized by ASUS along with uh, PC Games Hardware, Case King and some other sponsor which we will let Roman talk about in a few minutes because I actually don't know all the details myself. And then there's also the MSIOC Academy which is uh, organized by uh, Heibesman which is um, uh, Actually, uh, Hevesman, you you are uh, one of the founding guys of uh, Team GB, or the main guy behind it, That's right? That's correct, yeah. Yeah, right. yeah. I'm gonna talk about all that in details in a few minutes. Yep. And uh, don't forget that we will be taking questions from the live chat here on Twitch or although on Daily Motions because we are streaming all the weekend at both places at the same time. Yeah. So if you guys have any questions, drop it into the the chat. Uh, we'll try to to monitor as we go and. Uh, for the people that have missed the show, then there would be a, a replay, of course, uploaded on YouTube within a few minutes. Um, so let's move into the action of the thing. Sure. So first, Roman, I have a few questions for you. Uh, can you present yourself to the guys on the stream that don't know you yet? Okay, sure, no problem. Uh, well, my name is Roman. Um, my nickname is Dev Bauer. Um, I'm working for Case King now. I started Extreme Overclocking like seven, eight years ago. And uh, now my main job is taking care of overclocking stuff on Case King, doing uh, overclocking systems. And beside that, I, I do everything to like promote overclocking. Like, for example, the ROG camp we're doing in cooperation with Asus. Uh, yeah. Pretty wow. cool. You have an awesome job, man. Yeah, uh, Thanks. You do. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that's funny because <coughs> Roman is staying right in front of us. So when we actually look at the cameras, we're actually looking at Roman and that's the same for him. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, and we also have um, Hevisman and you're from UK, as we say earlier before. But can you give a little bit presentation of yourself? Sure. Basically, I'm an um, older person that likes to bench and um, I don't work for any of the large corporations. I just focus on Team GB and try to build overclocking and benching as a sport in the UK. Yeah, which is uh, pretty cool actually, you know, I think it's very important to have uh, guys everywhere that really get involved like you are and uh, pushing things locally for their team or their, their country in general as, uh, as far as overclocking goes. So uh, I I think it's quite amazing what you're, you're doing in the UK and it's really we're really happy to have you on the show today. And I think that at the end of the show, we're going to be talking about what we do expect for the, the, the future of overclocking and especially about the uh, like event like this. Uh, don't forget that we will we are here this weekend at the HWBot World Tour all weekend until Monday evening. Then we'll be in Germany with the U Roman and some of the guys. Then we're going to be in UK for the next weekend. So that's going to be three weekends in a row with overclocking stuff. And uh, I think that's going to be interesting to see what's going on uh, yep. in, the, in the OC world. So first topic. HWBot World Tour. Uh, sorry, I want to play the, ter the trailer because I really like this one. Truthman has some kind of addiction with the HWBot World Tour trailer. He's I, li like, I like he the has music a, on it. <laughs> yeah, it's some, it's some kind of a love relationship kind of thing. Wow. 
Welcome back, everyone. We are still in the OC Show, episode 6, season 2. Yes, and we haven't moved from the Gamers Assembly, so let's move on to that topic because there's a lot of stuff going on here. So what is, uh, where are we right now? Uh, so we are here at the HDR World Tour. It's taking place at the Gamers Assembly, which is uh, France's largest LAN party with uh, uh, about 2,000 gamers. I think uh, during the opening show, they say they reached uh, 1,750 uh, gamers that bought a ticket uh, before the event started. Plus, uh, there's uh, quite a few of the people that ended up having no Easter plan and just kind of just jump in. And actually, all the tables were filled today. I didn't so much host here, so I suppose, uh, yeah, it was fully, fully sold out as an event. That's interesting. That's the biggest LAN party in uh, France and actually a special one for us, actually you and me, because uh, five or six years ago from here, we actually uh, launched the Cooking TV by itself. Yeah, that's where we uh, started OCTV and I'm thinking, uh, actually the, the game as assembly is, uh, is, a, is, is an event that is uh, very used to uh, welcome overclocking stuff. Uh, they, they have been involved with overclocking since the very early days. Yeah, like you mentioned, 2009, that was already the 10th edition of the Gamers Assembly and they already had a, a tournament. It was an, uh, an amateur overclocking tournament on air cooling and back then it was involving all the big tech sites of France. So every, every site uh, was uh, had bring it, sending a team. So you had a hardware.fr, you had a... You had, a PC World and all those sites they were sending some guys and it was actually a pretty huge event and it ended up with like something like 30, 40 overclockers or something like that. So it was pretty big and it got a bit more calm in the, the recent years uh, and now they moved to this place which is much bigger than what they used to have which is a huge expo park kind of thing. And it's and brand new actually, that's only two years that this thing, yeah, this thing exists. That's it and uh, so they have enough space to fit a lot of stuff and we actually got very lucky to uh, to have the organizers let us use quite a fair amount of space. I think we probably have something like 200 square meters. I haven't measured, but it must be roughly that. We have enough space for everyone, and actually we have enough space for the 20-ish overclocker that is attending this event uh, this weekend. Yeah. Uh, everyone have like one huge table for uh, for them. That's uh, a lot of space that they can use for their their own purpose. Uh, as you can yeah. see on the screen, we are like uh, diffusing some of the pictures from the from the event. Uh, yeah, but so that's pictures we've done, we've taken so far since the start. Uh, the, you can find them all on Facebook if you want to uh, look at them closer on the HWBot Facebook page. Um, so among the, like we're talking about overclockers, there's a lot of people that are here today. We have, uh, for example, so there's of course Roman that came from Germany, but we have uh, mainly a lot of the French guys representing Clan OC and Cockatlan, which are the two uh, majors and most, uh, I would say, healthy, active, healthy yeah. and active teams at the moment. Uh, but we also have, uh, for example, Leekhoff that came uh, from Belgium. Uh, we have, um, what is his name, Oscar Face from uh, the Netherlands. We have uh, Airu Julius from uh, Czech Republic. Yeah, from Czech Republic. And uh, you, Trifman, you flew in from, uh, from Canada. I came with uh, Peter from Taipei. So it's a pretty international event. And uh, I'm, qu I'm quite sure most of the people are enjoying it a lot so far. Yeah, so far we want to add fun. Some of the guests didn't even slept last night. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. It's uh, people arrived. Uh, so started arriving yesterday around six uh, six p.m. They set up, and uh, I think uh, they used approximately already one thousand liter of LN2 from yesterday evening to today four p.m. There was about ten percent left in the tank today, so pretty <laughs> impressive. And it's good. I think we ordered three thousand liter in total because it's just gonna be enough. Uh, until the end of the event. Yeah, actually, that's funny because in the back, in the background of uh, behind us, you, you can see like some of the guys going outside to actually refill the dewars. Yeah, <laughs> it's like every time there's uh, like three or four dewars of 25 liters going out, so the, the tank is getting empty pretty quick. They uh, they already delivered 500 extra liters today, so it's it's, it's a never-ending story of filling and uh, fuming it. <laughs> Don't forget guys, we're going to be here all the weekend, so right after this show we're going to still stay here and do some uh, Q&A along, uh, yeah. along the night. So since we are talking about overclockers, there's a question from Talokin on the uh, Twitch chat asking how many overclockers are here at the weekend? Uh, so there's about uh, 22 overclockers that were here, so being here uh, for benching. And uh, <laughs> you, there's a lot of concert gamers which you can hear, but those guys are not overclockers and there has been about uh, 50 overclockers uh, that participated in the uh, amateur um, workshop and uh, 
among which uh, 30, 40 of them that participated to the, the actual tournament. So um, it has been quite a busy day so far and it's uh, pretty packed. There's actually not so much more space to fit more people. Yeah, but uh, I think there is uh, definitely um, an interest from the guys here, uh, either gamers or visitors, to see what's going on, what is overclocking, try uh, try that out and uh, know more about what's going on in here. Like most of the people that doesn't know overclocking are coming for the smoke of the uh, of the LN2, yeah. while uh, most of the visitors actually uh, most of the gamers come here like, oh, I heard about clicking, but I never tried that before. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, um, like you were mentioning, uh, among the things that are going on here and that were, was pretty busy was uh, the workshop. And the idea behind this workshop was mainly to uh, teach people the very basics of overclocking. So, you have to imagine that, uh, well, imagine, actually you probably know that mo most of the people that are gaming today are people that uh, started either on console and got into gaming because uh, PC games right now have a huge traction globally with uh, games like League of Legends, StarCraft 2, there's massive tournaments and there's a huge amount of gamers that are getting into PC gaming but most of them are not really aware of what a computer is, what, what are the parts. Uh, of course they hear a lot of marketing talks uh, which is pretty normal when there's uh, so much money uh, at stake. And um, so having a workshop of overclocking is actually helping them to be taught on uh, what are the parts for, how do they work, how you can actually get more of most of the parts that the, those guys uh, are buying. It's actually surprising a lot of the gamers are buying the K CPUs, you know, and they don't, they don't necessarily know that you, there's a difference between K and non-K CPUs. Uh, most of them just buy them because they're more expensive, so they think they will get more performance just straight out of it. But it's true that if you don't know how to overclock, you just don't get anything more out of it. So, you just get um, what you have. That's it. So it's, uh, that's part of what we're doing here. And in the tournament, then they, they get to actually uh, learn how to uh, compete. Uh, so making it in online competitions or in a very, very simple way and have fun. Like Usually they come among friends and they, they just have fun together beating each other's scores and, uh, and it's, it's pretty cool, yeah. Yeah, at some point, like five guys at the same time trying to overclock that was, uh, was funny. Like Usually yeah. it's like five friends coming, like one of the team. Yeah. coming and trying that and uh, actually defying each other that's, that's I, I, right. I like that spirit yeah I like that spirit. uh roman you've been uh, here at the event what do you think so far of what's going on here actually i think the event is, is quite amazing um i didn't expect it uh, to be that big to be honest mm -hmm. and um, i like that it's really organized like if you if you take a look at um like the whole event itself um just the basic stuff food and everything is, is perfectly arranged and just if you, if you take a look, a look around, everybody's just constantly having fun, no matter at what time of the day. And also the overclockers, it's, it's quite cool that I uh, finally managed to uh, get to know some of the French guys as well. Uh, yeah, because usually if you have an overclocking event in Germany, it's not like the French guy was, would go over, because it's just a long distance, right? For me, it was also like 16 hours drive, so yeah. But in general, I really like it, really great event. Yeah, it's true, the, like you mentioned, the, the team, uh, so the whole Gamers Assembly is a lot run on, on volunteering stuff and the yep. guys, it's true, uh, either at the, the food place or the uh, logistics for the organization, even the security team did an amazing job just facilitating all the LN2, the, the guys, they know the LN2 trucks are coming, you know, two weeks before they were asking for the, uh, the, the plates of the truck, so the, when they, they see the truck coming, they know it's LN2, they get it in straight away, no questions yeah. asked. So no, no questions asked. Very, uh, they really helped a lot to facilitate everything. Uh, Harvestman, did you have a chance to uh, see a little bit, uh, well, the, the stream was not much commenting because we ended up being very busy and not having so much time, but have you had a chance to see a little bit of what's going on here and what do you think about that? I must confess not to have watched any of it, <laughs> because I went to football today, my oh. team played Liverpool, <laughs> and that did, came first. Did, did they won? About <laughs> 10 minutes before the show. So, yeah, the, the, the team you support won? Four, yeah, oh yes, gave Liverpool a hiding today. So oh, that so. was worth it. <laughs> <laughs> Second in the league. Anyway, don't forget guys, we're gonna stay here at the Gamers Assembly streaming the HWBot World Tour all weekend. We don't cut the stream except when we have to reboot the system. And uh, we're gonna be here until late in the evening. And I just hope that all the gamers uh, around us won't st will stop yelling at some point and uh, finish their match for that. It's been like this like pretty much all day. Yeah, it's like it's... 
It's crazy. I would fought, I would have thought, you know, maybe they just shout a little bit at the start, like the, like the how is it called, the Aka thing that the New Zealand rugby team is doing, like you know, yeah, just to yeah, yeah. impress the opponent and you know show, yeah, yeah, I'm the strong guys. But no, they just yell the whole time. You know, there's almost no concentrating. It's just carrying the other guy from actually, pressing the right buttons. Like actually, one of those uh, one of the Xbox players, um, he came over to us and we asked him like, what is this about? And he said, yeah, actually there was one team like screaming like through the entire game so they can just disturb the opponent. Like, yeah. so they could not hear them like walking and stuff like that. Oh, so you can't, also, they yeah. really do it on purpose to annoy oh, the right. opponent. And you cannot hear the instruction from your team staff or the other guys in your team, I don't know. Well, I'll just think, we're sitting like 50, 50 meters away, maybe like even more. Yeah. And even we have issues like hearing each other across the table. And imagine those guys sitting 20, 20 centimeters away from it, from each other. It's, yeah. I, I think there's, there's a huge market right there for 3M that does those airport, uh, <laughs> yeah. like airport sound, 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 sound cross cancelling yeah. headsets. Just, just sponsor that add a microphone to it and you have the best yeah. headset in the world i mean it's not that hard to figure it out just go to a gaming event you're gonna see how it happens or maybe some duct tape to <laughs> <laughs> duct tape everywhere Shut them out. <laughs> actually that's what they do in the in the final uh, there was the um, world championship series for starcraft 2 here yeah. in, uh, in like uh, at the gamers they play with the can actually they have like stuff. a earbud inside the uh, like inside here's um, ear earplugs and they have like a noise cancelling headset and on then top. they have the sponsor headset around the neck and they are in a box that is supposed to be like um, uh, yeah. noise free. So to stay concentrated during the yeah. match. Uh, yeah. yeah, indeed. Right. Well, next topic, the Asus ROG camp in Germany. Yeah, so uh, from what I hear that event is uh, taking place in Germany and uh, we have one of the masterminds behind this event here. Um, so um, Roman, you're a good friend of Tom. Uh, supposedly Tom was uh, supposed to be our guest in the show, but uh, since he's uh, at some uh, family event for Easter, which is very understandable at this time of the year, Indeed. you're filling in and you're going to be able to tell us what is this event about, uh, what's the idea behind it, etc. Well, basically, um, Tom and me, we had an idea uh, at last Computex that we wanted to have an overclocking event in Germany um, when we're over a normal let's say rookie overclockers have the chance to learn how to overclock with Allen 2 because a lot of overclockers or a lot of gamers they would like to know how it works and would like to overclock but they are afraid that they damage the hardware and they just don't know what to do so uh, yeah basically we decided to create an online competition on hwbot.org and um, the result was that the top eight guys could qualify for the ASUS ROG camp uh, yeah ASUS basically offered uh, to help us out with the event because we obviously needed hardware for the for the systems so we did, we made a cooperation with them and yeah Tom and me are basically doing the whole organization and us is like supplying us with the gear and giving us the financial backup yeah all right so uh, so you're saying guys qualified from all around Germany uh, how many people participated in the qualifier and how many of them are going to be at the finals? Uh, I think total was around 30 people um, who participated, which is quite good for, yeah, such, a, good, yeah, for, actually, for such a yeah. competition. And yeah, top eight uh, qualified. And um, basically, it, it, actually it was not only Germany, it was also uh, Switzerland and Austria, but um, I think that we had no participant from Austria, but one guy from Switzerland made it. So um, I already talked to him and he already confirmed. So he will drive all the way from Switzerland to uh, Germany. The location is in uh, around Nuremberg, which is in the south of Germany. So the, it's quite okay. It's, it's quite, quite convenient. It's yeah. quite central for con uh, considering Germany, Switzerland and Austria. Yeah. yeah. So that event, uh, because the ASUS uh, office in Germany is taking care of Switzerland and Austria uh, and Germany, right? Exactly. So that's why it was all those guys were well, allowed to... No, um, well, there's a, there's a separate office for Austria and oh, okay, uh, Switzerland, yeah. but uh, we said everybody who is like capable of talking German should be uh, able to join yeah. should be able to join you could oh. have joined him oh yeah but well my German is uh, it's more I'm, I'm more capable to understand it than <laughs> talking it but you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah all right um, so um, do you know some of the guys that, yeah. that are actually um, qualified to go there uh, yeah um, I think the majority of the guys are from the PC Games Hardware Forum because, yeah, well, Tom is from PC Games Hardware, which is an online pre online magazine and a print magazine, and they did a lot of advertising, uh, also in a print magazine, 
and yeah, a lot of guys registered on the forum or were already present on the forum. One guy has been active on the HW bot um, PC Games Hardware team for, I don't know, like two years already and always wanted to do LN2 but he said like, yeah, I need somebody to teach me how to do it and uh, water cooling is not enough. So for him it was like the perfect opportunity. Um, to get in touch with Alan too, and he qualified, I think, third or second. And yeah, uh, yeah. yeah I'm we, we the, do the we rankings do, yeah. right now, and actually, some of the names are actually quite fami uh, familiar because uh, some of the guys uh, were guys that were winning the very first uh, rookie rumbles. Uh, like uh, we started that about a year ago, and uh, so they evolved from there to novice, and now it's really cool to see them uh, in this in such a, a qualifier and actually being qualified to go to that kind of exactly, event yeah. is really cool, really cool. Uh, what was the guys uh, needed to do in, in order to qualify? Um, we picked five benchmarks and we said you have to pick three out of five. Uh, the issue is we wanted to cover uh, a, a large amount of hardware possibilities. Uh, if you take a look at the normal HWBot competitions, they are mostly, let's say, held by a specific vendor and the vendor limited, limits the competition to a specific vendor. Hardware, yes. Yeah, yeah. so, um, uh, and we didn't want to have that because you don't want to have a, like a public event where you limit to, let's say, only Asus hardware um, because not everybody has an Asus mainboard. Yeah. So we wanted to just have unlimited competition, no, no hardware limitation whatsoever. Uh, so we picked benchmarks like um, uh, 32M SuperPi, which is quite common, HWBot Prime, um, CPU-Z validation, because if you think about you have uh, AMD users and Intel users, and we didn't want to exclude AMD. Because sure, you, yeah. you know that threaded the single threaded performance is, is worse. We cannot change that. But uh, we wanted to give them an opportunity as well. So you know that they clock quite high if you have one of the latest AMDs. So there were a lot of guys who had uh, some FX 8350 or something like that. They could like do like 5.5 gigahertz on water cooling. So. They had a chance as well, and uh, so we. I think we had a wide field of whether people could play in and qualify. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I think that's one of the very important things that uh, when you make qualifiers online, even if actually you're a vendor that wants to sponsor the event or some sorts, I, I would always recommend to to make it open because in the end, what matters is that you have a lot of attention and a lot of participation. In the end, the finals are on your hardware anyway, so. The exposure is kind of guaranteed for you as a vendor, but you get all the people that were, might, might not have been used to your own gear, but they're probably either going to switch or they're going to discover your own brand, so you're not, you're not losing anything or doing something. Exactly, like that. and the point of the qualification was that the people show that they, they are familiar with overclocking. I cannot, in an LL2 session, I cannot explain what a BCLK is. The, the people just have to know the basics of overclocking. That's what a qualifier is for, just so they can show they know the basics of overclocking, and we can we can continue with advanced stuff and more into the cool, cooling stuff with Alan too. All right. So the final of that event is going to be held uh, next weekend. Yeah, we will have uh, two days. Uh, it starts Saturday uh, morning, around, I think around 11 a.m. And the first day on Saturday, uh, we will just do uh, introduction, uh, safety introduction, which uh, you guys will help me with, and <laughs> thankfully. And uh, Afterwards, we will just show them how, how you like insulate your board, how you handle the LN2, how you pour it in, um, what is a cold bug, how does your system respond on the cold. So they, they just have a whole day to get used to the LN2. And then the second day, we want to get them into the like competitive overclocking. We will do an online, uh, online final um, on HWWatt. So we will pick some benchmarks. Didn't decide yet. <laughs> well, and, you know, uh, there's still time. <laughs> yes, yeah, still a week, right? <laughs> One week, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so and yeah, they they, they, they will play uh, or yeah, maybe three benchmarks, and the winner gets uh, some cool prizes. Cool, and everything will be live on Overclicking TV. Although at the same time, everything will be live on this channel. So yeah. tune in and uh, subscribe. And actually, we have planned that during that you're doing your, uh, your workshop, if it's not, depending how we can actually uh, stream that part, uh, we'll be doing some, um, some, uh, some kind of a long tutorial guide where we're going to show you guys how to, uh, how to basically start overclocking on air, then uh, eventually reach the limit of air cooling, move on to water cooling, get a little bit higher, then reach the limit again, and then move on to LN2. So you guys are going to see the whole, the whole landscape of what, what this is about and why we actually move on through the different uh, phases of cooling to actually end up at 
extreme other countries. Yeah, why not? And although the same thing, um, this event going to be in Germany, so a part of the stream going to be in German. Yeah, we're but we have will be commenting, guests, yeah. although in English most of the time, because actually, sadly I don't speak German. I yeah. can barely understand some word, and that's pretty much it. Yeah, most of the stream will be uh, in English, and uh, like you mentioned, uh, so we will have uh, Tom Lasker as well as some of the other editors from PC Games Hardware that will be. Uh, uh, popping into the stream from time to time to make sure that uh, there's an update for the German-speaking fans. Uh, to, that what are the latest updates, etc., etc. Basically, repeating or completing what we are saying uh, about the competition and adding things in German. True, true. So, uh, what else can we talk about these uh, competitions? Well, I think um, uh, Hivisman, have you uh, followed a little bit uh, that Asus uh, event in Germany? Uh, uh, since you're organizing a, an event as well, what do you, what do you think of uh, that one, the concept and what we've just said? I think it's brilliant that they had a qualification, that the qualification is open. Um, I think that is, is something which should go into best practice because that's definitely the way to go if you're going to have, um, even as you say, a vendor-specific event. I think that method gives you far more exposure than if you just have a motherboard that you have to use or a graphics card that you have to use. I think that is very, very smart. Um, with regards to the event, I've actually been way too busy um, organizing um, our event. I'm like Roman, I like to be very, very um, meticulous in my planning and things must be just so, or I'm not a particularly happy person. And at 130 kilos, you want me to be happy. <laughs> yeah, well, it's for sure uh, planning such an event is quite a lot of work, right? So, uh, I actually, uh, talking about the, the work involved to plan an event, since we are all kind of event organizers here in some way, uh, Roman, for example, can you uh, tell the people on the stream how, how many hours, do, how much work does it actually take to pull off something uh, such as the event in Germany that is coming up? Well, from event to event, you get more used to it and you. In the meantime, I'll, I, I made a, like a checklist of stuff I need to organize. So, but the first events I made, like the Gigabyte uh, EOC, for example, uh, which I do like uh, on a yearly basis and in uh, south, south of Germany as well, usually in the summer. Uh, yeah, the first first time it took me weeks because the, first of all you have to find a location, and uh, if you go to to any public e event location and, and tell them, yeah, we're gonna use liquid nitrogen, they're like. Yeah. Oh my Say god, what? liquid nitrogen, and, and yeah, and that's that's causing a lot of trouble, especially in Germany when you have everything is over-regulated, oh, yes. and uh, <laughs> yeah, so... Oh, the UK! Yeah, yeah and, and uh, then you have to organize the LN2 and food, drinks, all the stuff around, it has to be perfect to, to make the event great for the people, because you, you want to have the people having a, a great experience, right? Um, so yeah, everything has to go hand in hand. Yeah. Actually, yeah, we, we are all here kind of event organizer and we all have a way of to dealing with, with things and actually like the LN2 issue was actually one of the issues we had uh, in Montreal because the, the numbers of uh, leader of LN2 we had, I mean the same here, we... Of well, we course had we, a thousand leaders in, uh, in Montreal. In Montreal. But, but we were inside the university so you can imagine that the uh, security department of the uni was making sure they were doing their own job. And uh, they, they did their job in every possible aspect of it. They checked like everything multiple times. Yeah, which it is almost, it reminds me like the campus party in Germany uh, was very complicated. And I'm sure, Heivisman, for you, you also have some regulations you need to be taken care of before you can actually move in LN2 and all that stuff into a venue. I've, I've done quite a number of events in the last three, three and a half years. So I don't really give the um, venues or the people, the bureaucrats at the venues, much opportunity to give me any problems. I go in there with everything <laughs> I've risk assessments done, I go out and I do a site inspection prior to that, I present them a personalized, uh, as I say, risk assessment, I show them exactly how it's going to work, I insist on certain health and safety aspects to be in place, I put them on the defensive that they have to meet our requirements and it seems to work. Yeah, it's true. I think as, uh, as soon as you come uh, to Apparently. someone and you're really organized and you have all, uh, like you say, you have all your stuff ready and you just show, hey, that's what we're doing, this is how it's safe, that's what we are taking care of, 
for you guys you need to provide us this so it's actually safer etc whatever whatever you want to ask or get from them then usually they they take you already more seriously than just walking there like in your t-shirts or whatever and say yeah. hey dude, t-shirts hey, hey, dude we're gonna so we're gonna I'm wearing a t-shirt up. today because it's, <laughs> it's the forum i belong to but i'm a suit and tie kind of person so yes yeah it's very important i think when you're planning events that you're like for people that are watching or that maybe wants to plan an event to swim, I think it's really important that you, you can dress nicely or like properly and you, you come with your stuff prepared and like this you, you get no issues whatsoever because if, if you're not taking it seriously yourself, how do you expect people to take you seriously anyway? Indeed. Absolutely. Absolutely. Come prepared. That's the same thing when you go to an overclocking competition. If you're not prepared, there's not much that you're gonna get a good score. Yeah, anyway. don't take them. You're making some of them two bombs in the backyard after the competition. That's the kind of thing. One, you don't want to do anyway, <laughs> and two, don't ever mention anything like this. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's a reaction to uh, Cloudville uh, uh, comment on the Twitch chat. Uh, there's a question: Do you have to wear high vis uh, while using LN2? Though, <laughs> I think that's a. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I've been asked about whether we need to, um, I did an expo at, um, in Hull um, in November and it was at a university and people actually asked me, their, their site manager, the security guard actually asked me, well where's the, um, you know, the hazmat outfit and the, the, the goggles and the, the whole thing and he was, he was quite surprised when we did everything without even gloves. <laughs> yeah, a lot of the people are used to the uh, regulation in labs, and uh, they just right. they just always follow it without necessarily questioning it. But it's true that if you don't, if you well, the thing is we're using LN2 with the, the thermos most of the time. We very rarely touch something that is extremely cold uh, or made cold by the LN2, unless uh, it's uh, like plates of metals or things like that, or like the hoses from the dewars. In that case, we we take protection. But it's true for. Most of the stuff we're using, uh, most of the guys never use protection. Well, there is a reason for it, right? If you, if you have a gloves and uh, if you pour LN2 and you, you would pour it over, the, over wrong gloves and they soak like with LN2, yeah. you get a cold burn very easy. So uh, it's actually it's actually quite safe not to use gloves. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. yeah, that's true. De decanting from the, the vehicle when you, you know, filling up the deal was yes, definitely, because as you yes. say, that hose, even if you insulate it, is going to get cold, and yeah. you, you tend to have to hold on to it for a bit anyway. So, you, you you're going to want something between your hand and the hose anyway. Yeah, it's true. Uh, there's a there's a comment in the chat that um, <laughs> in India there's no fixed law. <laughs> well, each city has its own self-made L and two law. Well, yeah. I actually completely believe that. <laughs> they are basically, yeah, they are used to Darwin law. Yeah, Darwin it's, like a, care. yeah it's like places like in Taiwan, it's easier to order LN2 than... You can uh, even order LN2 and make them in elevators to go up in the, <laughs> in like the building. Actually, I think in Taiwan, ordering LN2 is as easy as ordering pizza. Seriously, <laughs> you just grab your phone, yeah. you just call the number and say, Hey, I want two rangers uh, to this address. And uh, yeah, that's it. The guy says, sure. Uh, do you need a special hose or something? Or, yeah, I should provide a hose and that's it. Okay, <laughs> yeah, let, let me just... There is just one funny thing from Germany. You know, no, it's not you, like that you, in the UK. You, the only one or two suppliers in the UK, it's terrible. <laughs> so they don't provide you any hoses? You have to rent all the parts or buy them <laughs> yourself? I've, I've got a very good relationship with my supplier and um, I've brought him, I would say, in the last three, four years, I'd say at least I've increased his business by at least thirty percent. Thanks to overcutting. But now supplies. So, yeah, he's good to me. He's very good to me. Yeah. yeah what I wanted to say in Germany, if you transport LN2 in your car, you have to have a fire extinguisher with you. <laughs> <laughs> makes total sense. Yeah, it makes total sense. Yeah. Well, yeah. just about the regulations in Germany. <laughs> Same. Uh, uh, there. Well, I have a slight issue with your camera, uh, Roman, but it should be fixed. <laughs> it's actually it's, it's, it's a a fixed in a very funny manner. Your, <laughs> your hands are holding <laughs> upright. Your your camera is lagging yeah, for some reason. <laughs> for um, some it's like stop reason. motion, Wallace maybe, and Gromit. Maybe maybe it's me. Maybe it's not even the camera. Yeah, <laughs> maybe it's because you're trying to do a sponsoring from Red Bull on the stream and it's actually, kind of Actually, I only showed the backside, but thanks for mentioning the name. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, 
Uh, since uh, Truthman is trying to fix the, the camera issue, uh, we should move uh, to, uh, yeah, to the event in, uh, from that you're organizing, Harvestman, in the, in the yeah. UK. So you're uh, the, the mastermind in the UK behind that event. Uh, you are um, planning it as a Team GB event um, and you're partnering up with MSI. Can you tell us uh, what this event uh, is about? What's your role exactly in it? And um, yeah. Okay, very simply. Team GB is a community project, okay, we're not affiliated, so it is for every single overclocker and venture in the UK. You can be with any HBOT team, you can be not even a, a, a competitive venture, you might just do it for the fun of it. Um, and the, the reason this came about was the very first event I ever went to five years ago, um, it was only for one forum. Everyone was stupid. And I didn't like that. I thought that that was wrong. I didn't like the way that things were done. And you've got two choices. You can either moan about it, or you can do something about it. And I decided to do something about it. And that's how Team GB started. And we've been holding events, well, like I said, it's going on three, three and a half years now. That's, it's pretty cool. So it's an open, uh, it's an open event uh, to everybody. Um, yeah. So what activities uh, do you guys uh, have planned there? Well, the benching this the weekend in April is over three days, and the three days are divided into quite um, relaxed categories. The Friday is going to be for those folks who are able to get off work early, students who can get out of lectures want to come up and they can free bench they're just going to have a bit of a they're just going to have fun It'll give us a chance as well to iron out those little gremlins the things that you can't legislate for um, until the event actually starts the saturday is going to be a little bit different in the morning we've got a three hour um, certificate course going on for the novice bencher now interestingly i've got a couple of very experienced benchers who have decided to do the course as well because of the kinds of things that it covers. It will have your basic things, introduction to Alan, to the health and safety aspects and all that, but it's also a little bit more theory involved. I find if you explain to people and give them the understanding of the theory behind stuff in ways that they can understand, okay, so if you're a bencher, we're going to be talking about thermodynamics, but you're not going to say that, you're going to show them how cooling works and why cooling works in the way that it does. And if you've got that knowledge, you can then take that and apply it when you actually on front of your motherboard, you're cooling your CPU, you're cooling your VGA, and you might wonder, well, why is this happening? Oh yeah, I remember, this man, he said this, this is what's happening at the moment. And I've seen it in the past, it's, it's something I used to do when I lectured, and it worked then, it works now, and it's just a question of refining that. So while the course is going on, for those guys that want to do the course, we're going to be starting the deathmatch series um, in the benching venue, the main benching venue, and that's a series on 1v1 bench offs. And when we join, we then be breaking into other. I don't want to share the activities all of them right now, because it's pretty much an experiment that we're trying. We want to change how benching events are done. Mm -hmm. So we're using this event as a proof of concept and looking at the time flows and the way, I think it's going to be pretty interesting. So there are going to be parallel contests happening at the same time. There's going to be group benching and there's going to be individual benching on the Saturday. The Friday will be the semi-finals and finals and a whole lot of free benching. Sorry, the Sunday will be semi-finals and finals and a whole lot of free benching as well. And a couple of fun benching events like we're going to have the media having a bench off against the vendors because we've got a whole heap of vendors are going to be there. Um, MSI, yes, are certainly main partners in this, but we've got a whole host of partners that have been really, really helpful and very generous, not just with equipment, but also with time and assistance. And yeah, it's, it's going to be pretty exciting, I think. All right, so you will be the guy doing uh, the, the, the teaching and that uh, course part, right? I do some of it, yes, but I, bu I believe in building capacity. So you don't want to have one person as being the only person that can do anything. So you teach other people how to do it as well. 
So, and I've got um, Drifting for Life, who's going to be doing part of the motherboard preparation side of things. But yeah, I'll, I'll be doing um, some of the, the coursework as well in the morning. That's correct. Okay, so Abang, uh, you mentioned one of uh, the guys here in the UK. Um, so yeah, there's going to be uh, several participants. Can you already tell us a few of the of the names of the guys that are going to be uh, to that event? Yeah, I've got I've got the lists already out there. Um, right, let me give you the benching names. Yeah. Yeah, we've got Gavbon from Player. We've got Drifting from Life, Drifting for Life, Barandi from OnTech, Bulldog Two Nine. Obscure Paradox, Enterprise from OCN, Overfiend, Gregster, Kim and Sally, Nico, I can't say the second part of his name, 1974, <laughs> Admiral Huddy, Kitford One, 8 Pack, our friend DeBauer over here is coming, I understand, K404, Mass Man, um, Tim, you coming? Yeah, Top sure. Dog. And one of the guys on the chat room at the moment, Jumper118 will be there as well. And Raws will be there. So we've got quite a lot. And then we've got another nine uh, vendors who are coming to have a look through and media coming to look. And plus spectators, because we've got a lovely venue and spectators are welcome. There's plenty of space for them. They're welcome to come and look, have a drink because we bench in pubs. We don't bench in venues like oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, we I bench in pubs. UK style, right? <laughs> Absolutely. All my events are held in pubs. Well, it's a great way I get to get local businesses involved, <laughs> eh? you know? Yeah. yeah. The, the venue looks totally amazing. I saw the pictures on the HW forums. Seriously, great location. Seriously. Yeah, yeah especially yeah, uh, the, the new one looks really, really great, actually. Yeah, yeah and I'm, I must just actually thank that venue because um, the venue that we were going to be using the building next door caught fire yep. and uh, Green King, the, the brewery that owns all these venues, they jumped in and they were incredible. They, they've just been fantastic. So my thanks go to Green King Breweries and tell you what, we're going to drink a fair amount of your product over those three days. But there's actually something else happening on the night. Uh, there's also going to be an awards dinner where Team Great Britain is going to be recognizing those people that have achieved in benching and overclocking in the last calendar year. So oh, that's all that's all the, the package so the guys get a reasonably good deal for their ten pound booking fee. They get their hotel, they get the Allen two, they get hardware and they get the location up for dinner as well. Oh pretty, pretty cool actually. Um, Roman, you, your event is very similar in some in some ways to it, uh, especially the part about teaching people of, uh, about uh, how to move to extreme, etc. What do you think of uh, that event in the UK? Actually, the event is great. I I, I kind of missed it. I don't know why, but uh, <laughs> in the first place, I didn't I didn't know about the event. And just when when uh, Ian Eightpack told me like, "Are you coming over to the event?" I was like, "Which event?" And then he told me, "I said, yeah, of course I'm coming over." It's like. It sounded great. Uh, it's just like the fact that you you can basically do whatever you want. You can you can go there, participate in, in competitions, or just hang out and watch, or yeah, or, or, or uh, bench for free the whole day. That's that's, um, that's great. I, I love stuff which is not restricted to something. So in general, a great event. Yeah, that's why I wanted to be there and meet some well, guys exactly I never it. met, like Louis Man. I never met him in person. So yeah, time for that. Yeah, Roman, you've you've actually hit it. It's it's about having those choices. If people want to take part in the structured and planned events on the Saturday, they're more than welcome. But, you know, if, if you want to bring your favorite CPU or your favorite graphics card and you want to break that personal best, we will help you all we can to achieve that. Because the whole thing about Team Great Britain and the whole thing about MSI in, in the UK as well is about helping people achieve their personal milestones, achieving their personal bests. And they've been fantastic as well. Yeah. That OC Academy name, right? Um, there were some, uh, so it started, I think, quite a few years ago already. It tones the shops in uh, in Belgium were using uh, the OC Academy naming for uh, for their for their it's, OC it's events. And then a uh, friend's office, uh, I think, uh, with Pepino used it Pepino as well. Pepino did that in the MSI doing, France, yeah. Yeah, that's right. And uh, it's actually cool. I like. I, it doesn't matter who came up. It was the name anyway, or who is yeah, using it. Yeah, it, that it's came really, from, The concept from, here is really yeah, that great. Yeah, came from MSI. And, and, you know, I mean, I'm, like I said, they, they're helping us with um, 
with the accommodation. They help us with some of the motherboards and the graphics cards. So as, as long as we're able to serve and look after and nurture talent in the UK, I don't mind what you call it as long as it works. Yeah, indeed. Uh, Timothy, you're going a lot to that event. Yeah. What do you expect from that one? I'm expecting a lot of things. I know it's um, the, yeah. so the, the whole plan for, for the event is actually uh, it's, it's a very serious plan. You know, I've, I've made all the events since 2008, almost all I think. I haven't missed many. And um, so mainly on the coverage side of things. So I've done uh, what I'm focusing on is always doing the videos and the coverage and especially uh, more since uh, the Internet is looking like something more proper in more places like streaming. And um, you know, it's uh, when you have a plan such as this one, it's ex extremely ambitious and it's also extremely exciting at the same time. It's, uh, you, you need that kind of challenge to really push the, the boundaries of what is already existing and uh, the, the kind of things you can actually achieve through it. And it's, uh, it's definitely a, a, a big push. It's, uh, it's going to be a, quite a challenge to, uh, to execute the whole thing in an amazing way. But I'm, I'm looking really, really forward to, to see all this rolling out and see how uh, all the guys are going to, uh, to attend the event and um, enjoy themselves, you know, because in the end, what matters is that the people that go there have a great time and attend the next one. So I, it's going to be, you it's gonna be really, uh, really I, cool. I actually yeah. want to correct you on that. It's not just the people that go there that have to have a good time. Also see, that's what we're trying watching. to change. We, we actually also want to have those folks that are watching the event, the guys that stream, become more involved. So that's, as you say, it is going to be quite challenging. And I think you're going to have a couple of headaches, but we will get through them and we'll work it out. Yeah. Um, we do have quite a, a program established, but 80% of that program is actually focused at the viewer, at the folks watching the stream. So our mission is not just to look after the bench who's physically going to be there supporting us and make sure that the vendors get their um, value out of their support. Our mission is actually also to engage with the viewers, to make the viewers participate. And we've got a couple of innovative things that we're going to be trying. Look, some of them are going to crash and burn. Accept it. We know that that's going to happen. But we're pretty certain quite a number of the things that we're going to be doing are going to work and are going to increase viewer participation, make them come back more often and make them get involved. So we're going to have things like the viewers are going to have an opportunity to decide what is the calculation line going to be? In other words, okay, we've got a whole host of singles going on, but we've got two lucky losers. How do those lucky losers get chosen so that they go through to the next round? Well, the viewers are going to have their say on that. Stuff like that. So there's, there are a whole host of different little things going on that's constantly going to keep the viewers engaged. We've also staggered our benching sessions, the contest, the organized side of it. So. Basically, every 15 minutes, we've either got something new starting or we've got a deathmatch, a one-on-one -on -one ending. So there's always reason to come back. Take, go pretend that you're going to, I don't know, toilet and if you had work on, go and have a look on your phone and see what's going on. We're trying to keep people involved. Yeah. So it's not just for the guys that are there, it's also oh, yeah, for the viewers. For sure, yeah. Well, especially uh, I'm always advocating for anything that is uh, live stream oriented. And uh, I do know how frustrating it actually gets to, to watch something and uh, not necessarily having the, the commentary you expect or not having the, the guys the on the stream. Uh, yeah, oh, information, yeah. missing out on your questions, etc., etc. And actually, talking about questions, uh, there's a jumper asking what GPUs we will be using there. Uh, well, we, we, we've got um, we've got some nice toys there. I've got a whole host of um, lightnings that haven't been released for retail that are going to be available for use. They're going to be um, they're going to be in demand. We've got a couple of 980s. Um, there's a whole there's there's a fair amount of um, graphic power going to be on display. I don't want to go into too much detail with that at the moment. But let's just say that for the guys in the UK that haven't been benching pro, you will not have benched with these lightnings before. <laughs> That's interesting to see that we, um, uh, like these kinds of events, are actually targeting people to be more and more involved. 
And I think that you, you had the two keywords for one of the guys on the live chat, Iro Tracks. It says benching in pubs. What did I tune in to? Great stuff, guys. So I'm pretty sure that these guys are going to be watching that in, the, in two weeks from now. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, you ne never miss out any streams. You, you're always going to be surprised what comes out of it. Well, well the thing is, you, you know, when you have these, like a lot of these people, the names that are read out, most guys won't know them. We, we've got three people that have never benched before. I mean, the one guy actually had to go and register an HBOT so that he could have a username that, that we knew. <laughs> so that's how it starts. The, the, when the last time that I was in Cambridge running event, um, we, we've got three people, four people from those new guys that are still there, still going strong. And one of them is actually um, admin in Team Great Britain now. And you know, it's it's that evolution, that development, that nurturing that right. makes it worthwhile. And yeah. you only need one person. And and this time around, we, we're widening the, the possibility because you might get one person from the stream that gets inspired. Yeah. If you've got one person inspired, it's a success. Yeah, that's it, yeah, exactly. There's a lot of people actually, um, uh, we started when we did uh, the the stream on Twitch, and we've got lucky uh, enough sometimes to be uh, featured on the front page. And there's um, so it happened. Uh, it happened at MOA last year. It happened, happened at, uh, the at the OC AO gathering. Yeah, although in June last time. It happened uh, very briefly at the AOC, uh, the ASUS event in in, in, uh, in Moscow. It uh, even happened at the HDI Bottle C anniversary for a very long time actually, and uh, at the LAN ETS as well. And you know, like uh, when you have. Um, People that have never benched before, if they, they hear or see or get inspired by anything they are watching, the, you just can't stop those guys anymore, you know, they, they keep on coming back, asking more questions about uh, first their own hardware, you know, and then they eventually just start benching, you know, I've got some guys even that were like, oh yeah, I saw you guys talking about, you know, uh, that thing or that thing, so just went to HDI, but downloaded next to you and just ran under my system and then I That's just started it, you know, benching it, you know. Take away the mystery. Yeah. It is no mystery. It's super you know, easy. It's, it's <laughs> make it accessible to people. You know, let them feel that anyone can do it rather than it's something that only an exclusive few can do. And and that's our mission. I mean it's it's about growing the sport. The stronger the sport is, the better it is for everyone. Yeah. And uh, also what is uh, super important, like uh, like you guys, Team G B or any other team in the world, you know, like a lot of people got used to uh, basically just uh, wait that event happened, you know, and uh, well, you know, if you want the sport to grow, you you need all those local team guys like you and the others to, you know, take the initiative or just like the Jagad OC guys in Indonesia, same thing, you know, it's like you want to do something, you want to grow this, well, first thing, don't wait for someone to just do it for you, just, you know, just go out, find five guys, ten guys, whatever, how many you can find and do it in your garage, do it in the pub, do it uh, in a bigger venue, whatever, it doesn't matter how big it gets, it's just as long as, as long as you're growing it around you, then it's it's just perfect. Yeah, it's um, like with Tom Loske from PC Games Hardware, uh, like one and a half years ago, I went to their office, uh, to, the, for, to the print magazine to, um, to make a video about extreme overclocking and introduce it to those guys and they wanted to make an, like an article about extreme overclocking and then Tom was like this is really interesting can you can you teach me how to do this and then actually he, <laughs> and wanted, that's he, he wanted yeah he wanted to motivate other guys to get into this and then he was the guy getting into extreme <laughs> overclocking so he ended up at my place uh, for three days and I taught him how to do extreme overclock so yeah you never know yeah, yeah, and yeah. that guy is like helping you now to organize even for that exactly that's how it goes right yeah. It's a big community thing. I mean, the, uh, if the community want to just is passive, that that won't uh, that won't grow. But uh, what we can see with the like the all the overclocking even that's happening more and more uh, today is that we are aiming to a more professional uh, organization of the OC events. But there is also some of the uh, like local bench party that the guys do organize for like the team spirit and uh, and just to bench with some friends. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you can. You, there's all sizes, all kinds of different types of event. There's no, uh, there's no epic standard of what a way an, an event should be. You know, if you want to try something out at your event, just do it. You know, it's like, oh, you don't want to do the regular 18 versus 18 kind of competition. Yeah, screw that. You know, you can just do a one versus one, a five on five, whatever. You know, just figure a way to do it. And maybe you know, right now there's not. There might not be the exact way to do it, but you can try things. You know, there's. 
for example, I always say you, you could take a 3D Mark benchmark, there's five presets, and nothing stops you to actually do one person do each preset and you just make the score out of it, you know? So, yeah. so what? No there's problem. a lot of possibilities to do at this kind of issue of event. Uh, first question for you, Timote. Uh, for you, what are the key elements in making a success, uh, successful event? Uh, first thing is uh, plan properly and find people to help you. Uh, the, the, the biggest the mistake is to, um, to I think, um, just expect that things are going to be easy. If it's your first again, it's probably not going to be that easy. Plus, uh, don't don't hesitate to ask for it. There's always a, an immor enormous amount of people, you know, that are just waiting for that one person, like you said, uh, Harvestman, to that one igniter, you know, to, to start the thing. And once you have that guy and then he gets another guy to help him and then by the time you notice, you have five or six people helping you out or something like this, and then you, you make you can make a lot greater things like this. Like for example, like today we had the, the guys from uh, Cockatland Land and Clan yeah, Sea that were yeah. helping us out for the for the uh, amateur training, you know, and uh, teaching them and helping them out with the competition, how to submit, etc. And they actually totally enjoyed themselves, and it was really something uh, we were really counting on. We asked them before, hey. Uh, we're gonna be super busy. If you have uh, one hour on Saturday, uh, you can just take it and you just teach the new guys. And most of the guys didn't do one hour, they did two hours, two hours and a half, you know, and they're gonna do the same thing tomorrow. It's, so yeah, yeah, just plan and ask for help. Yeah, planning, I, I do agree on that. You have to plan this and make sure on uh, getting, you, you cannot get everything right the first time. But if you, if you don't get everything, just write it down and just try to improve uh, next time. Uh, Roman, what's, uh, what's the key element for a good event for you? I think I have to agree with Tim. Um, yeah, the, the, the main stuff is that you, you should make an event where you think about if you would attend yourself, would you like it? Like, would you miss anything and uh, would you be really satisf satisfied with the event? I think that's, that's the, the, the proper approach how to do it. <clears throat> yeah, the, the preparation is the main, the main thing, really. Yeah. And you, Havisman, what do you think? What uh, what is the key uh, the the key the key point of clarity of vision? You have to know what it is you want to achieve. If you can identify and write down in one simple sentence or two or three points at most what it is you want to achieve, you can then plan and work towards achieving that. If you can't articulate your vision, it's going to just be a, a shambles. You have to know what it is you want to achieve. Yeah, ex exactly. Yeah, it's true. If you don't know where you're going, just just stop doing it. it, it it's not gonna go anywhere. It's, it's actually just like benching as well. It's like if you have no targets when you go to a to a bench party, you're just gonna waste time and probably destroy hardware, or whatever, or do stupid things, and Correct. you know you're not gonna enjoy yourself in the end. You need to know where you're going, and doing events is the same thing. You need to. Well, you can't have get some a lot kind of pleasure of out of destroying hardware. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. I know, but usually I'd like to destroy it once it's already dead. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, another question for you, Iwisman. Um, what would be the type of event do you think that's the um, uh, brightest future? Like uh, that local event, a purely online event, a mix of both? Um, I, I didn't hear the first part of what you said. Could you repeat oh, it? Yeah, it's, it's pretty loud around here. Um, what, what, which is the, the type of event do you think has the brightest future? Is it local events mainly, uh, online events like 100% online, or uh, something hybrid in between them? Um, I would go as far as saying that we need to move away from just thinking local, as in regional, and we need to start a combination of of regional and almost continental as well as um, an online. I think you can create a synergy of all of those that would really work. Um, for example, you could have three, one of the things I'm, I'm looking at doing next year is having three events happening at the same time in three different locations and have them coordinated from a single control point. And we're going to be testing part of this today uh, well, on, on the event here. So, for example, we've actually got five people working, just running around working at the event. 
They're not there to bench. They're not there to participate. They're just there as assistants. They've got designated roles, designated tasks they've got to do, and that's it. And I think that that will create far more excitement, far more awareness. Because when something is regional, oh, it's happening over there. It's not mine. It's happening over there. Yeah. So you don't really tune in, you know, it's, it's in another. But when it's all over places, you're creating a much larger amount of excitement, a much greater energy. And, and that, I think, is something that we need to look at for the future, is join them all together. So have an event in France, have an event in um, Scandinavia, and have an event in Germany and yeah. England all at the same time. That yeah. would work. Actually, it makes me think, you know, um, especially for the either the team cup or the the country cup. Uh, usually, when you reach the the last moment of the competition, there's it. always that uh, that the moment where people just quickly kind of arrange a kind of improvised gathering. Usually, but it's like people that live uh, not so far from each other, so it's usually not a huge amount of guys. But they, because you know, it's the last last moment where you can get those extra points to either push your country to the victory or anything like this. So it involves already different groups of people in different locations, and because you have this kind of timer ticking for everyone, well, it can be something else than a timer, right? But then yeah, I it's, mean, it's exactly yeah the, this kind of the spirit, yeah. That, that's exactly, but that's happening already, and that's the point. It is already happening. It's it's happening in very small and not particularly structured, but the framework of Country Club, for example, provides that, or the framework of the, the Team Cup provides that. So we could arrange something like this, these events in various localities, simultaneously, in line with those competitions. Absolutely, I don't see why not. Cooperation, yeah. yeah. And then you can always have a live stream from the different places and some kind of entertaining stream which pings back the different location and check out what's going on here, what the guys they are doing, hey, da da da, etc, etc. That's so, right. You're not just stuck watching someone's jeans and a silver flask moving up and down for seven hours. You know, yeah, like the stream today where we had no time to switch the angles. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Well, I mean, I'm not, I never oh, saw wait. the stream today, Oh, yeah, so. I was sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> you, can't, you can't be online like three days in a row, 24 hours, right? Well, the only way you we, can we do have that to sleep is, at a certain yeah. point as well. And the only way you could uh, even even then doing that is you would have to triple the amount of people doing the streams anyway. So, but having different groups in different places, then you have a lot more people actually doing the things. So yeah. it's a lot less boring already. Well, actually, I do like the way of um, like that, that. That do like that. There's so many events happening at the same time, or uh, like 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 you said, um, I had an idea a few years back to to do that 24 hour, 24 hour around the clock in different location on different time zones. Uh, so we can have like a 24 hour show. Uh, I think that was AMD that did that for the Phenom 2 launch. Oh yeah, yeah I they think had they that, did uh, it. that uh, it was uh, the Black Edition stuff. Yeah, when they, they launched had, uh, the launch back the Black Edition. So they had this uh, they had this huge uh, stream thing where they had so they having I think they they had uh, different top overclockers. Uh, even that they had uh, I think you were benching as well. Yeah, I was benching. Uh, so they had selected time. some guys in different continents, and basically it was 24 hours of benching of that CPU. But of course, it could be something else, right? But the idea was that no matter from where and when you were tuning in, uh, the idea was always present for 24 hours. And if you're doing some kind of connection with a contest or some uh, social connected event with it, then yeah, you can easily end up with a, a pretty long one block stream where everyone gets involved at the same time. And you know, you could be benching on your time zone and once you're done, you just watch the benching of the other guys. Or, um, whatever is going on in the different places. Right? Yeah, indeed. Um, it's been one hour wearing this show and as a cooling god just say, my beer is soon empty. And I do think that we might uh, end the show. Uh, last question for you, Tim. Uh, mm -hmm. Where is the next big event after all these European events? Well, you know, um, it's going to come pretty quick to uh, the crucial point of the year, which is called Computex. And uh, I think most of the next uh, big events uh, once we've done all this uh, massive, amazing block of events in April, it's going to be probably around June. Um, so for Computex, there's already a few competitions planned. You have the JSKLOC World Cup. Um, there's no competition uh, coming up from Intel this year, it seems. Um, so it's going to be um, also the, the World Tour stop uh, at Computex as well, just it's uh, the, the days that just follow the Computex. 
Um, and I think um, there's also quite a few events that are ongoing in the Indonesia as well that are pretty pretty interesting in a way that they also like uh, like we were talking before about training the new guys and inspiring people so those guys actually go around campuses in the in their country and I saw that uh, so Jagado are the guys behind those events and I saw there's another overclocking team in Indonesia which uh, are the ones that organize the the, um, the TO, OC 44 the, right the TOC event yeah and those guys also are starting to uh, do that same mm. or similar kind of event in their campuses which are more south in Indonesia as well. So the top, the guys from the north in Jakarta are doing this, this locally around all the places that they can access. And the, the other team is taking care, care of, of the south. doing something similar in the south. And you can, we have to see that this is something that has never been done yet, involving university campuses all over the country. And you can expect from Indonesia probably, probably this year actually uh, to see a... Uh, a big, a big event that is going to be so massive that it's going to involve probably uh, overclockers uh, as a team or as individual competing, representing uh, their universities. Uh, probably five, six, seven, eight, or nine universities across the whole country. That's going to be something that we should uh, really uh, look at and probably get inspired as well on our sides. Indonesia is awesome for that. Like the guys at uh, Jagat and OC44 are bringing so much work into it and they are so dedicated to that. It's always insane to see what they do. Like every time Alva posts some pictures online, it's like, damn, one more workshop, man, you did great and, uh, and uh, keep pushing. Um, what's up for today? That's going to be all for The Aussie Show, episode 6 from the season 2. And uh, don't forget that we're going to stay here live all weekend, uh, streaming live from the live uh, from the Azurebot World Tour and right after this we will be back with Roman in front of us. He will be talking a little bit more about uh, some of his new gears. Uh, I think that uh, you're gonna have the Beast uh, CPU pot, the one of the massive, massive one and uh, some uh, new special terminal pace that you might be uh, actually announcing for the first time ever. Exactly, yeah. It's like gonna be the, the official product launch now. Like, <laughs> stay in here, maybe in 10 minutes we're gonna have some very interesting material for you. That's great. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Evisman, to be here with us. We do appreciate that uh, you were part of this, and we hope to see you in uh, two weeks from now, I think. Yeah, that's it. Don't two worry, guys. Keep it cold. <laughs> keep it cold. <laughs> see you in keep two weeks, man. It. Yeah, and thank, thanks, Roman, of course, for uh, having uh, filled in on that uh, ROG event. It's, uh, so I'm also looking forward for that one. And uh, thanks, Truffman, for being our awesome host today and our uh, producer behind the scene, uh, clicking every corner of the computers as we, are, uh, as we are talking and fixing cameras problem live. You know, it's, it's really amazing. Uh, and uh, yeah. Actually, the, the, the weird thing is I have a fatal application exit error right in front of my as screen as you don't for the click, past 20 like, minutes. I just want to click it. As you, as you don't click OK, it's not that I close, close the window. <laughs> so don't, so don't it's not that okay. fatal anymore. <laughs> well, uh, thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned. We're going to be right back in uh, right, uh, right, right after that, uh, just finishing the, uh, the recording of the, of, the, uh, of the OC show, relaunching the live uh, to the Azure Robot World Tour. Timothée, when's going to be the next OC show? So every OC show is usually always shot on the Monday. Um, so um, today is the is the live um, live Q and A. Yeah. So the next one is going to be airing next week, and I think by then we should be somewhere in between uh, Belgium, Germany, and the UK. So we're probably going to debrief about all that and um, talk about. The next things so that up. means that will probably happen uh, either on Saturday evening so we can do that live at one of the locations or uh, in a, a bit later in the in on yeah, Monday. it's not defined yet yeah, uh, that's it, the maybe it might just be from a from a highway parking on the in Germany or somewhere you know <laughs> that's it. streaming from the car like Romans driving and you doing the stream hey why not I, never I done mind. that before as long as 3g passes is fine well, thank you guys very much for watching. Stay tuned, we're going to be right back. And uh, you can still already subscribe down to the Twitch channel or the Daily Motions. And uh, don't forget, until then, keep pushing it. See you in a bit. See ya, bye. <laughs>